1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. And if you and I are going to pull that off, if we're actually going to do it, we're going to have to speak in tongues. There are times when we pray in our understanding and it takes all of our mental energy. Remember Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed so hard he sweat. And, and it really does take a lot of mental energy to pray with our understanding. But when you speak in tongues, the language comes from the Lord Jesus Christ through the gift of Holy Spirit inside us, and then we, we speak it out. So we can speak in tongues in situations when we could not speak in tongues with our, when we, could, we can speak in tongues or pray in tongues in times when we could not pray with our own understanding. Now remember, speaking in tongues is a Christian speaking a language that he or she does not understand, a language that has been given by the Lord Jesus Christ through the gift of Holy Spirit. And we're going to look about, we've, we've looked in a different video at what speaking in tongues is not. Now we're going to look at what speaking in tongues is. First of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, it's a language and a language of men and angels. When I speak in tongues, when I speak in tongues, it's a language. It isn't just gibberish or made up words. It's a language and speaking in tongues is a language of men or angels. Speaking in tongues is supernatural. It doesn't come from the natural. It's not something any man can do. Only true Christians can speak in tongues because it's a manifestation of Holy Spirit. It's not a natural ability. It's a supernatural ability. It is a God-given ability, absolutely. Speaking in tongues is a manifestation of Holy Spirit. Now, when we talked about what speaking in tongues is not, we said it's not a gift. That's true. Speaking in tongues is not a gift. It is a manifestation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says, I'm reading uh, the ESV, English Standard Version, to each, meaning to each person, to each Christian, is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. I, I know it's tossed around a lot in Christianity that speaking in tongues is a gift, prophecy is a gift, but they're not. They're manifestations. And you might say, well, okay, I'm lost. What's the difference? All right, I, I have here a light bulb. <laughs> Common, ordinary, nothing fancy about this. Um, if I handed you this and said, here, I'm giving you a gift, a light bulb. The light bulb is the gift. Now this gift has two manifestations if you stick it in a lamp and plug it in. One of them is light and one of them is heat. You can't get the light without the bulb. You can't get the heat without the bulb. If you have the bulb, you have every manifestation. It's not like you can plug the bulb in, but you only get heat, no light. Or you plug the bulb in and you only get light, no heat. The manifestation is a making obvious. That's what a manifestation is, a making obvious or a making evident. And when God, when a person gets born again and becomes a Christian, they, they receive the gift of God, which is Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized every one of you and you shall receive the gift of Holy Spirit. The gift is Holy Spirit. Now, once we have the Holy Spirit inside us, there are different manifestations. One of them is speaking in tongues. One of them is prophecy. One of them is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. They're different manifestations of Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is not a gift. It's a manifestation. Why is that so important? Because every Christian has Holy Spirit, so every Christian can speak in tongues. You might be saying to me, well, I don't, I don't speak in tongues. If you don't and you're a Christian, there are reasons for it. Maybe nobody taught you how. Maybe nobody told you could do it. Maybe nobody convinced you of all the good reasons for speaking in tongues. There's various reasons that you might not speak in tongues, even if you're a Christian. But if you have Holy Spirit, if you're a genuine Christian, you can speak in tongues, absolutely. Speaking in tongues is part of the power that Christ mentioned in Acts 1.8. If you remember just before his ascension, Jesus Christ gathered his disciples and he said to them, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you will receive power 
when Holy Spirit has come upon you. See, again, we, we get born again, we get Holy Spirit, and that gives us power. What kind of power? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, faith, miracles, gifts of healing, tongues, tongues with interpretation, prophecy. There ought to be a huge difference between the Christian and the non-Christian because the Christian can walk in spiritual power and we ought to be seeing more of it. You ought to be able to walk into every church service and there ought to be tongues, there ought to be interpretation, there ought to be prophecy and people would say, wow, what's this? It's part of the power that Christ said would come and it's one of the things that speaking in tongues is. It's part of the power that Christ promised would come to Christians. Speaking in tongues is one of two manifestations of Holy Spirit that didn't exist in the Old Testament. Speaking in tongues and interpretation are brand new for the Christian church on the day of, on the day of Pentecost. Things like word of knowledge, word of wisdom, these things existed in the Old Testament. Miracles, healings, these things existed in the Old Testament. Tongues interpretation, no. Brand new manifestations, brand new for the church, absolutely. Speaking in tongues is from Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 33 says that God gave Jesus the Holy Spirit, which he poured out to the believers on the day of Pentecost, and then he energizes that Holy Spirit so we can speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a way to say Jesus is Lord. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by Holy Spirit. So when we speak in tongues, we're manifesting that Holy Spirit. We're saying that Jesus is Lord. Also, manifest, uh, speaking in tongues is under the speaker's control. And that's very important to realize. When I spoke in tongues earlier, God did not take me over and make me speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is under the control of the speaker which is why, by the way, in 1 Corinthians 14, there are instructions about how to use it and how not to use it. For example, the scripture says if you go into a church building, everybody shouldn't be speaking in tongues all at the same time because if an unbeliever comes in, he'll say, well, he, he'll, it causes confusion at best. So why are, if, if God's making us speak in tongues, he wouldn't tell us how to use it. He'd, he'd use us the way he wanted to. God tells us how to use speaking in tongues because it's under our control. We speak in tongues if we want, don't if we want. Start when we want, stop when we want. Speaking in tongues is under our control. It's very important that you and I understand then that God wants us to speak in tongues. He wants us to. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5 says, Now I want all, I want you all, this is the ESV, now I want you all to speak in tongues. I think the King James says, I would that ye spake in tongues, which if you speak the Middle English of the King James Version, the, the Shakespearean English, then you know that it's saying the same thing. Here's God's word to us as Christians. Now I want you all to speak in tongues. Why? <laughs> well, we, we haven't seen all the benefits yet. That's for another session. But it's important for you and I to know that God says he wants us to. Now, some people downplay this because they read the rest of the verse. It says, now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. Okay. <laughs> so are we prophesying too? We should be. But don't say, oh, I'm not going to worry about speaking in tongues because I'm, I'm really going to focus on prophecy. God says, do we get this? God, hello, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that made us Christians, the one that promises us eternal life, says, I want you all to speak in tongues. Now, at some point, we need to go be honest with the scripture. How are we going to pray without ceasing if we don't obey God? I love what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Now I speak in tongues more than you all. And if the great apostle Paul can do it, we should too.